I greet you all in, a, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Moyo, for that uh, kind introduction. You asked me, where is my kumusha? Let me now reply you in front of everybody. We have no abiding city here. Sad truth if this were to be our home. We seek a city yet to come. My Kumusha is up there. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I now stand to speak your word. I know that I'm a sinner like everybody else. But I ask that you might touch my brain and your spirit might sit on my tongue. Let the words that come out of this mouth be your word. When I speak, may you, Holy Spirit, speak not to the ears but to the heart of these men and women. We thank you, Lord, because you said, ask and it shall be given. And I have asked, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Verse 13. number 10 to verse number 13. One more time. Luke 13. Verse 10. Down to verse number 13. The Bible declares. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let's go through it one more time. I want to invite you to listen very carefully. Because just when I'm starting, I'm finishing. We won't be long. Jesus will move very quickly among us. The Bible reveals to us as we begin that Jesus was teaching. Notice that he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. It is not just in any place, but it is in a synagogue. It is not on any day, but it is on the Sabbath day. 
the Jews understood, you see, that the safest place to be was the synagogue. Old Testament law said, if you find yourself in trouble, one thing you could do was run straight to the temple and grab a hold of the horns on the temple. And there you would be safe. So the synagogue was a place of safety for the Jews. And to double it up, to be on the synagogue on the Sabbath day was very, very safe. The story we've just read is about a woman who has a spirit that has attacked her. This spirit we know was an evil spirit. Yet the Bible makes it plain that when she went to the synagogue it was still with her even on the Sabbath day the spirit was still with her church let's remind each other that being at a certain place does not stop the devil from affecting you. Being at church on a particular day does not mean you are safe. Hello, Sangano, are you there? We need to understand that there is no power in the synagogue. The power is in the God who made the synagogue. There is no power in the Sabbath day. The power is in the Lord of the Sabbath. Let me tell you the truth. There is no The power is in Jesus who is at the Congress. So don't think you are safe until you are sure that Jesus is in your heart. If Jesus is not in, it does not matter where, what time, how many pastors are there? Satan can still inflict you. She was in trouble. In the synagogue. Listen to the church. We are not talking about people not in church. We are now talking about a woman who was at church. She was there at the church. Not talking about some people who are out there. The issue is that the Lord is at the church. It's about a woman at seventh day. A woman on a mission. And yet the devil also had a mission in her life. And the Bible then reveals as we read verse number two, the next one, that she had been with the spirit of infirmity for 18 years. And she was bowed together. And could in no wise lift herself up. One more time, rewind. Listen very carefully. 
And let her know what her issues were. Number one, she was a woman. What did I say, church? She was a woman. Disadvantage number one was that she was a woman in a society that did not regard women. The first problem she had was that she had been born a woman. To be born a woman in a Jewish society meant you were not regarded as worthy as the men were. It meant you did not decide for yourself, others decided for you. All you did was follow the decisions of ours. When, when they decided, when she, when she wanted to get married, she did not choose her own husband. It was chosen for her because she was a woman. The job she would do was chosen for her because she was a woman. When they made decisions, they did not consult her. They only told her what she to do. Reason being, she was a woman. Somebody here knows what I'm talking about. The disadvantage of being born a woman in a society that looks down on women. This is the story of this Seventh-day Adventist. But it was happening also in the church. Not only was she born a woman, but for 18 years, she had a spirit of infirmity. She had a bent back. Other versions say she was a cripple. So she was not only affected physically, she was affected socially also. When men chose her wives, they would look at her and would skip her because of her problem. So now she had a social problem. She had a marriage problem which was because of the physical problem she had. Those who saw her as she was growing up gave her nicknames to suit how she was shaped. They laughed at her and they teased her. And after some time she accepted it. And for 18 years she went around being crippled she went around being one with a bent spine. This is her story. But it is the story of the Seventh day Adventist. She could in no wise lift herself up. When Jesus saw her, he called out to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose. Follow closely yet another time. Those who knew her said she had a problem with her back. When 
they talked to her and the doctors inspected her. They said, it's a spine problem. Your spine is curved. Your bones have a problem, you see. That's why your body is this way. When a man diagnosed, they would say she has a back problem. But Jesus met with her and Jesus being the doctor of doctors looked at her one time and began to address her real problem. Jesus says about her woman thou art loose. According to Jesus the problem was not a back problem, no. According to Jesus, there was nothing wrong with the bones, no. Jesus does not talk about her bones. He simply begins to say, Woman, thou have been loose. You have been loose. Something's wrong here. To be loosed means you were tied before. Hello? Hello? <laughs> the real story here is this woman was a prisoner. She had been bound by the spirit, the evil spirit. And yet they thought that she had a back problem. Ah, you're listening. The problem has Let Jesus do the true diagnosis here. And he will let you know that uh, your mouth has no problem. He will let you know uh, that the problem is not dressing, no. He will let you know that you don't have a problem because you are fighting with your husband. That's not the problem. Jesus' is true diagnosis is woman. You have been tied. You are bound. You need to be free. You need to be free. Hello, church. Jesus needs to free somebody this morning. Your problem is not what the doctors say it is. Your problem is not what your neighbors tell you. Your problem is not what you think. Let Jesus tell you your real problem. And he will tell you it is a spiritual problem. Church, you are not here. I'm telling you why you don't have a job. It's not, not the economy. You are not free. Are you here? Woman! My, you need to be set free. And so Jesus Jesus says to her, firstly, Woman, my, thou art loose. And then after freeing her, he puts his hand on her. And then she becomes straight. There are women here who can't be straight anymore. They are always bent. They move and walk around bent. Doing bent things. Crooked women here. Jesus 
just wants to deal with that problem. Yes. The reason you are crooked is not what you think. The real reason you are crooked. The reason you lie and you cheat and you steal is a spiritual problem. You need to be free. Only after Mushure Mekunge. He says, Woman, thou art loose. Does he say, Touch her and heal her? Are you here? Jesus does this because the Bible also reveals that she could not carry herself. She could not carry herself. Uh, uh, she she could not do it in her own power. Amen. And I want to let you know this morning that Payashika Apaka now where we are, you cannot do it in your own power. You cannot straighten yourself up. Jesus, we need Jesus. Shamu won't work anymore. I start We can't discipline you on this one yet to make you straight. It now needs Jesus to help you straighten up. Not the pastors, it needs Jesus. Only Jesus could straighten her up. And I know there are people here who have problems in their homes and problems in their society. People who are challenges to pastors at church. And it needs Jesus. Only Jesus can threaten us. Because the source of our crookedness is a spiritual Problem. When they looked at her, they said it was the spy. When Jesus looked at her, he said it is a spiritual problem. I must congratulate this woman because for 18 years she had a problem but still went to church. Amen. Hello, are you here? You get in trouble for three months, we can't see you here anymore. But for 18 years with an issue, she still went to church. She still went to pray. 18 years suffering. But never gave up on God. And because of this, because she was in the right place, she met up with Jesus. Don't give up, ladies. Keep persevering. And you will meet up with Jesus. I don't know how many times. How long? You've been suffering. But today I want you to know. You have come to the right place. Because Jesus is here. Woman. My. Thou art loose. This morning the message is a straightforward one. The gossip, the hard-headedness, the stealing, the cheating, the adultery, and faithfulness, disrespectfulness, that's a spiritual problem. And before Jesus deals with the side effects that come with it, 
He wants to loose you from the devil's hold. Before he, we pray for the jobs. Before we pray for healing for your disease. Before you throw the tablets away. First, Jesus wants to deal with the spiritual problem. And Jesus is saying to somebody, Woman, thou art loosed. Woman, thou art loosed. And today, you can meet Jesus' statement halfway. Respond in faith and say, yes, Jesus, I am free today. Satan no longer has a hold of me. I am free from the spirit that has been riding on my back. I am free from the forces of darkness that have been controlling me. Yes, Jesus, I want to be free. I accept what you say. I am free. If today you want Jesus to sort out the spiritual mess in your life, Without wasting time, stand for wherever you are. Come up front, we're going to pray together. We don't wait for the musician. Who wants to be free? Come forward. This is not for everybody. If you don't want to be free, sit down. Woman, my, thou art loosed. Thou art loosed. Today, that little goblin won't visit you ever again. You are free from the Mapostory waters. You are free. You are free from the stones. You are free. You are free from the curses. You are free. Woman, you are free. Quickly, quickly, you are free. You are free. Come forward and listen to Jesus. You are free. You are free. You are free. You are free. Freedom is yours. You are free. Quickly come. You can't come to a place where Jesus is and go back the same way. Jesus deals with the inside. And then after the outside, he deals with the outside. So after he had freed her, he healed her. And I know you stand because you need healing. But Jesus is saying, I want to heal you inside first. Because we can never be truly on a mission. Unless our hearts are on the mission. We can't be a, on a mission on the outside only. How can we go out there and free others when we are tied ourselves? The world out there must know that women's ministries is a group of free women. Because when the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. Free indeed. Shadrach, Mishik, and Abednego. Thrown in the fiery furnace. Bound by Nebuchadnezzar. Jesus also steps into the furnace. The furnace does not burn them. 
But Jesus causes the fire to burn the ropes that tied him. And Nebuchadnezzar says, Did we not throw in three men? How is it I see four? And they are loose. They are loose. They are loose. Jesus' is people are never tied. Peter is in prison. Soldier on this side, soldier on this side. Chains on both sides. But because Jesus is in the heart, the chain cannot remain on the hand. He becomes free. Free indeed. Free indeed. Doors open on their own. Because when the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. There is no devil who can tie and Jesus can't untie. He can't lock and Jesus can't unlock it. Free. Free. Free indeed. They took John, they put him on an island. And they tied him in isolation. But even when in an island where there was nobody to preach to, John finds freedom in the book of Revelation. Because you cannot tie a true Christian. You are loose. You are free. You are free. <laughs> or what the devil shackles. God can untie. Are you listening? But Revelations reveals that during the thousand years, millennium, God ties the devil. And Satan cannot untie. Ah, <laughs> when God ties, Satan cannot untie. But when Satan ties, God can untie. The pastors are here, and we're going to pray together. I'm going to ask Pastor Moyo to pray for us, and then I will close after him. That namatei, babo edu namponi si Jesus. Tudaku tenda inoti muri muari. Uti mga vara kuna mna no vura. Mga vura kuna mna no vara. Mbiri nerukuzo nga zukiri kwa muri nozo kwa fanira. Da kutenda baba ne maruzi ya wako atiri. Tasunu ngura jeni. Baba na mponezi cheso. Da hi mga ise ana zinoro wako atiri. Zinoti uongu pa shuzakana kakwete pa chitema. Imi jetsu mutiperi yomu moyo. Yoku gara tichimba haleluya. Mutipe zakare shokori noti enda, enda, asusa tazeje. Noti enda baba na mpone stesu ne shokora kadai. Na pasta timuri nyo muza pa maigu wa meboso wengi kwa mbonerei. Pacha chawa kwa tine ngwa ino tewera. Muronge zei, imi jesu mchimtunga mira. Noti enda baba, neguti manzwa mina matuedu. Pwete na utena mataisu, asu na utena matashipute nestara jesu. Nesimbare mu ya mtuene. Na utena matamstara baba. Nira mwana kwa maana. Nira mwana mtu ene. Na jeso anokurumiza kuya. Amen. Father in heaven, I know there is freedom free for all here. But I pray now after Pastor Moyo for a bonus. After the freedom, please bring the healing. After the freedom, bring the blessings, Lord. Father in heaven, 
A song is singing in my heart. Satani changa chandi sungain. Asi Jesu andi sunungura. Father, we pray that the freedom might not only be for us, but we might go to a present world and set men free in the name of Jesus. I want to pray, Lord, that you chain the devil. Keep him at bay. Lock and close doors for the enemy of souls. So that where he once got into our lives, he may no longer. I ask that you close the doors of our hearts from the inside. Because you will be inside our hearts. I know, Lord, that I must be careful this morning to give no human being the glory or the honor. The power is all yours. The glory is all yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gatina Matei. Baba dar kumsoro kudenga na mponis Jesu. Tinoda kukutenda Jehova ni shokoro ya patini nengu vaya kafanira. Tangata ka sungwa Jehova ni mangeta na satani. Asi Jehova ngao ngwe nekuda kwa kutita sunu ngurwa. Apotisha zokera kumisha mwari. Musatani ya kutisatani ya kutisunga shakari. Jehova tizoreo mkatime shakai pa. Tinoshu ira odenga. Mnyoro mastaidu mkatime tambare upenyu. Nerimeni zuamo ya nembire nye kudenga chiku wanu kwa mastaida ganyo kwa mkatimi tsambare upenyu. Janamata ni kutenda mustara jisa nukara ni kusinga peri. Amen. <tos>